everybody this is Tracy here with another edition of a view from Tracy's point and we are here today to share some bad news um, especially for those of you um, that are fans of gospel music and in the Kojic Church which stands for Church of God in Christ but um, earlier today Bishop Rance Allen passed away he was 71 years old and when I tell y'all I love me some Rance Allen, of course, we know that we all um, will have our date with destiny. But when you just log on to the computer and the first thing you see is somebody, you know, that you uh, followed, that you supported, who has been an inspiration in your life um, or in my life in this case, you know, it hurts like, you know, someone that I knew personally has passed away and the reason i love rance allen so much is because him and gospel artist john p key like when i was in my 20s and i was trying to figure things out these two gospel artists got me through some rough rough times and one of my favorite songs and one of his more popular songs is something about the name jesus um if you're trying to you know figure out who this is or who i'm talking about if the pictures you know aren't shaking your memory and i say that because i made a post on facebook and my oldest daughter who is about to be 36 years old she's like i'm not trying to be funny but who is this man and i'm thinking like as much as i used to have this man music blasting in the house <laughs> when she was a little girl i could not believe she asked me this question it's sad news but you can also rejoice in the fact that like it's hard for me to be really sad when a person passes away when i know they lived their life doing exactly what they were called to do and what brought them joy i become sad when i know you know a person has struggled their whole life um, they die with their potential untouched and unreached but when i know that somebody you know from all appearances live the life that they chose to live then i don't get that heavy sadness within me but it's more of a joyous sadness that yes it was their time to go but i know that they accomplished so much in their life if that makes sense to you Dear Saints, the initial notice of Episcopal transition is as per the directive of our presiding bishop and chief apostle, Bishop Charles Edward Blake Sr. God, who is omnipotent and omniscient, has summoned his servant, Bishop Ransley Allen, to eternal rest. Bishop Allen served as prelate of the Michigan Northwest Harvest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Bishop Allen was a world-renowned gospel artist and affectionately known as the father of contemporary gospel music. Bishop Allen's unique vocal ministry was an, was an indispensable sound within the Church of God in Christ and Christendom. His gift transcended the boundaries of musical genre as he remained a sought-after personality called to perform on global venues. During the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic resulting in local and state restrictions on public gatherings to achieve social distancing, the family will hold a private memorial service for this servant. When the restrictions are lifted, a date will be set for a jurisdictional memorial service that will appropriately recognize the godly life and notable achievements of Bishop Rance Allen. During this time of uncertainty, we request the continued prayers as well as acts of emotional and spiritual support for the family. It is with great honor that the National Adjunctacy will assist the family during this most difficult time. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. Um, sanctifying the leader I am 
Robert G. Rudolph Jr., Adjunct General Church of the God in Christ Incorporated. And so that was the official notice that came out um, letting the world know that Bishop Rance Allen had passed away. And so here's a little more information about him if you're not familiar. As a vocalist, Allen was known for his massive vocal range. He and the Rance Allen group performed alongside other gospel greats like Andre Crouch, Marvin Winans, B.B. and C.C. Winans, the Clark Sisters, Kirk Franklin, Marvin Sapp, Shirley Caesar, and Donnie McClurkin. The Rance Allen Group also won two stellar awards in 2012 for Quartet of the Year and Traditional Group Duo of the Year. Allen was often referred to, as was mentioned in the press release, he was known as the father of contemporary gospel music. And during his career, he was a recipient of five Grammy Awards and once performed for President Barack Obama and recorded a song with Snoop Dogg. And so the song that he recorded with Snoop Dogg was Bless Me Again. It was on Snoop's 2018 gospel album, Bible of Love. And he actually performed live with Snoop Dogg doing an awards show. And I believe it was one of the BET performances. And so Alan told the Toledo Blade and that he thought someone was playing a joke on him when the rapper first reached out to him. Alan said of performing with Snoop Dogg, I've always believed that while I want the world to have Jesus, I've got to give them a little something that will pick that will prick their interest. Allen also spoke of his belief that the Snoop Dogg collaboration would lead to his work being exposed to a larger audience. And he went on to say that when Snoop says, hey fellas, Jesus saves, he's going to shake their worlds. Allen's wife, Ellen Marie Allen Groves, said that she uh, met and fell in love with him at the age of 16. The couple married with her father's consent in December of 1970. Before becoming fully involved with the church, Groves refers to her husband as the sweetest, most humble, patient, loving, giving man this side of glory. Um, Allen founded the Rance Allen Group along with his brothers, bass playing Steve and drummer Thomas in their hometown of Monroe, Michigan in 1969. His official website describes the group as beginning to invade the world with a new contemporary and innovative gospel sound. And so he got his roses earlier this year. And, you know, we always talk about giving people their roses, letting them know how much they are appreciated. And this year in February, he was celebrated in Toledo as part of Black History Month. It's part of the celebrations. A wing of Image Madison School of Arts in the city was named after him. And so his legacy would definitely live on that way. And so Alan was quoted as saying, I've been singing over 60 years and it's been as far as I was concerned, a ministry. Then to get to be 71 years old and someone says, we want to honor you. It made me want to put my suit on today. It's a wonderful thing and I'm enjoying every bit of it. And then in April of 2015, which was when he performed for then President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama at, at the White House, it was part of a special event celebrating the history of gospel music. And so Allen told the Monroe News at that time in the lead up to the performance, quote, I am so honored I can't find the right words to describe it. I'm excited and a little bit nervous. Allen appeared on the lineup alongside other legendary performers such as Aretha Franklin, Lyle Lovett, and Emmy Lou Harris. And so at the event, I told performers in a speech, songs were where their dreams took flight, where they expressed faith and love, as well as pain and fear and unimaginable loss. While Aretha Franklin said that the event was absolutely wonderful, and she went on to add, it warmed my heart to be back with other gospel singers I grew up with, like Shirley Caesar and Rance Allen. 
And that's a quote from Ebony Magazine. A little bit about how Rance Allen came to prominence. Um, he was a gospel musician under Stax Records. Allen was an eight-time Grammy nominee, and he had grown up in the shadow of Motown, recorded for Stax, and been influenced by Chuck Berry, but his songs were always a deeply profound and fervent expression of his religious faith. Um, he was quoted as saying, it's music, it's truth, it's the anointing of God, it's an exciting thing, and you can hear it. In the early 70s, Stax would launch a spiritual imprint called The Gospel Truth, and in part to give Allen's voice a platform. Um, Rance Allen may not have had the name recognition of some other Stax stars, but he certainly had one of the most powerful voices in the music industry. And that's a quote from the communications director with Stax Soulville Foundation, Tim Sampson. During the Stax Museum Soul Comes Home grand opening concert in 2003, not only did he get a standing ovation with the crowd, at the Opium Theater, but he also was the only artist who got a standing ovation among all the other legends backstage. He also visited the Sykes Music Academy on several occasions and the students were in awe. We will miss Rance and our thoughts are with his family, the members of the Rance Allen group, his fans and his parishioners, said Sampson. According to Rance Allen himself, his career actually began when he was in grade school and he was quoted as saying, I was maybe nine or 10 years old when I picked up the piano. From there, it went to guitar and drums and everything else I could get my hands on. Most religious artists think entertaining doesn't have anything to do with gospel music. My, but my grandmother, she wanted us to learn how to entertain. She'd say, if people don't see you if people don't see you're enjoying your stuff, they're not going to enjoy you. Entertain, perform, make folks laugh, make them cry. You got to be able to work the area of emotion. We always took that advice to heart, he concluded. Although Allen was influenced by gospel artists like James Cleveland, his guitar style and finely etched songs bore the marks of Chuck Berry of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. At that time in my life, Chuck Berry was like a superhuman, superhero, the way he played the guitar, Allen stated once. And while I was concentrating on gospel, I was very much interested in the secular world of music too. By the early 70s, after releasing a single on the Tiny Reflect label, Allen and his group were primed and ready to break nationally. Naturally, they headed to nearby Detroit to land a contract with Motown. We tried to go to Motown, but Motown didn't do gospel at all, recalled Allen in an interview. The next step was to go to Stikes Records, and they didn't do gospel at that time either. But Stikes ahead, Jim Stewart and Al Bell liked, that, liked what they heard, and so they called my manager to tell him they were interested, and interested to the point of trying to possibly come up with a new way to get the record out. So the new way turned out to be of the formation of the Gospel Truth Records, which would become a spiritual arm for the soul label that would go on to release albums by Reverend Maceo Woods, Louise, Louis, Louise McCord, 21st Century, and the Reverend Jesse Jackson's People Choir of Operation Push. It was a first for Stikes, and we were the first ones to record on that label. There's no way we would have gotten the first record out had it not been for Stikes having that kind of faith in us. When you got a record company that will say, we believe so much in this artist that we will create a label for them, well, I'm forever grateful for that, Alan went on to say in another interview. After signing to Stax, the Allen Group would eventually come to Memphis to record, absorbing the city's musicians and players. That was a mega, mega step for us. We started studying the musicians down there, people like Duck Don and Al Jackson and Bobby Manuel, Lester Snell, all of those guys. We were just amazed by the way they were able to play. We basically went to school on them. 
That's the reason why even today, all these many years later, when you listen to our music, you hear the real Ridge Stacks flavor in there. And so in 1989, Allen moved to Toledo, Ohio, where he began preaching at the New Bethel Church of God in Christ. In between his ministry, Allen would remain a stalwart presence on the gospel circuit and continue to record and perform. A frequent visitor to Memphis and Soulsville, he appeared at the Stax 50th anniversary concert in 2007 and visited the Stax Museum and Museum Academy numerous times over the past decade. Allen's early 70 output had eventually been given a renewed focus in recent weeks as Kraft Recordings released The Gospel Truth complete singles collection or retrospective chronicling the Stax imprint that Allen helped usher into existence. In addition to something about the name of Jesus, um, other songs by Rance Allen include You That I Trust, which was released in 2001, Miracle Worker, which was also really popular in 2004, That Would Be Good Enough in 1972, um, I stood on the banks of Jordan, another, another, another popular song. Um, I belong to you in 2002. Um, Ain't no need of crying. Another popular one that was in 1975. Um, a little louder, like a good neighbor, do your will all day long. Joy in my soul. That's like a choir staple there. If you have been in the Baptist church, you've probably heard the choir perform joy in my soul. Um, I got to be myself, which came out in 1973. And I mean, he had a lot of songs. I think he released like maybe 15 albums. As I mentioned earlier, he was nominated for nine Grammys. I believe he won five and just had a very illustrious career and, you know, lived a good life. And so, you know, job well done to Bishop Rance Allen. May he rest in peace. Guys, go ahead and leave your comments below, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And let me know if you were a fan of Rance Allen and what was your favorite song. Until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.